talking about how to be successful with business emails, and now on to the actual subject of the body of that email. And again, the use case that we're talking about here is reaching out to someone that you're talking to for the first time, or maybe you've had a little bit of correspondence with, and you're trying to get build awareness, get an action, or get a response. The first thing that you always want to do is start off emails talking about that person and complimenting them or flattering them in any way possible. We all are subject to wanting to hear about ourselves and how great we are. And so if you start off an email and you reference a blog post that somebody wrote about or something that they accomplished or something that you thought that they did was very cool and you just keep it short and to the point and sincere, you're instantly going to get their attention and you've almost guaranteed that they're going to read that next section of your email 100%. The second thing is I like to write emails in outlines, not paragraphs. So especially any time I have to include a little bit more information in the email, I create headers and then bullet points beneath those headers. And it's typically just a much more consumable way for somebody to take in that information because if we see a long list of paragraphs, we tend to avoid it. That also relates to what we talked about earlier, keep your email short. And I generally have a three sentence rule. Anytime I'm emailing somebody that I don't know that well, or that I'm trying to get an action for, I keep it as short as possible. My general rule of thumb is no more than three sentences. There's an introductory sentence, there's the here's what we need sentence, and there's the conclusion sentence. The shorter the email, the more likelihood that you're gonna get a response. Once you get a response from that person, then you can provide more detail, then you can provide more information because you know that you have their implicit permission that they want to hear back from you. The fourth is the use of bold and italics. And be careful and sparing here. You do not want to send emails that have multiple words in bold and italics and long sentences. You want to maybe use this at most once in an email to draw one really clear point. And especially if you have to have a longer email that requires two or three paragraphs and there's one key point Put that in bold so that the reader can immediately go to that and if need be, respond to that. And finally, everything below the signature is fair game. So feel free to fill up that part with as much information as possible. Most notably, your contact information. Put in your email, your phone, your Twitter handle, your blog address. Feel free to put in PS, PPS. Keep putting little add-ins add on. This is where you want to add in reference information that when somebody goes back to the email later on, they can call up at any point that they might need. Once the reader gets done going over the body of the email, everything above the signature line, they'll kind of mentally feel like they're done. So you can fill up everything after the signature line with reference information that they want to get to later. If you make sure to follow those five rules, you'll always be more successful at getting a response or a different action from the person that you email. Thank you.